Gun Free Code Camp, JavaScript Doggo's data structures in the ES6 course on challenge 19 of 29. So after this, only 10 more left. Today, we're going to use getters and setters to control access to an object. Okay, so once again, guys, always read through this and try and solve this on your own first. If you can't solve it, that's what I'm here for. So I'm going to kind of go through this, but once again, always read this in full. Essentially, what this is talking about is private properties so objects can contain private properties that we don't want direct access to so we can use getters to get us a value and then we can use setters to set a value so essentially we're getting a value indirectly and then setting a value indirectly um, this has there's reasons to do this once you get deeper into uh, OOP so I will wait for free code camp to kind of overview that once you get there but essentially right now what we have to understand is that okay we can define a class and then we can make a get method and a set method the get method just returns us data from the object the set method actually updates the object okay so that's the main theme here of what we're going to try and do is we're going to create a, a class of something and then make a getter to get the data and then a setter to set the data the whole idea of doing this is that we would be doing this convention on private variables. So private properties and private objects. Um, you can determine something is private by the convention of the property name starting with an underscore. So you can see how author, it's underscore author here, the actual property, right? This is signifies that this is the actual property name. So underscore author is what I would have to access to get the author value. Right? It's private because it's underscore author. Okay, And it, it, this is a good point to point out. However, the practice itself of just putting the underscore doesn't make this private. It's a convention that we as developers have to recognize and follow and say, okay, I know that this is now a private property, a private variable because of its underscore uh, name. So I'm going to treat it that way. JavaScript will not naturally treat it that way. So this is the whole idea is we're going to create a thermostat constructor that is going to have a temperature getter and a temperature setter. So you can see this author has a writer uh, getter. So it tells you who's the writer, the author, and has a writer setter. So that sets the author. So we're going to do the same thing, but with temperature for a thermostat. Okay. So class syntax, we know how to do this to, to at least define it, right? So class, and it's going to be thermostat. So thermostat. Then we open it up and then immediately always constructor, create your constructor. And you probably need to spell this properly, so don't misspell it like I did. And then the constructor is going to take in a temperature, right? We're going to pass it some number, and then that's going to be it's this dot temperature, the same way the book has a this dot author. So let's take in, let's we'll just call it temp. And then we're going to say this dot temperature. So this dot temperature. And it's going to be equal to the temp, right? The argument we pass in when we actually create a thermostat, that value is going to be the temperature. However, this is going to be a private property. So we want to say this dot underscore temperature, like so. So now it tells us as a developer, okay, this is a private property. So we need a getter and setter. So within the class still, we're outside of the constructor now, but we're still within the class, right? All of this code block is still the class. So I'm going to say, uh, well, we need a getter. So let's say git, and then this is the method name. So git, I'm just going to call it temperature, get temperature, right? If I want to get the temperature, just like any other function, except I define it with the git term, the git uh, keyword here, because it's a class, and I can just return this dot underscore temperature, this temperature, right? So whatever object this get method gets called on it just returns whatever the temperature of this object right so when i when they say uh thermos equals new thermostat and it's 76 when they say let temp equals thermos thermos dot temperature that's going to return to them whatever the temperature is in this case 76 okay so let's continue on and add our setter property right so we can see here the setter takes the new value and assigns the property to the new value so that makes sense we're setting it so let's set it so set I'm gonna call this the same thing T set temperature and it's gonna take in the new temp and it's a function 
Okay, so this function is going to assign this dot underscore temperature. So whatever actual object it's called on, it's going to assign this dot temperature or this dot underscore temperature to be the new temp, right? So this sets the temperature, this function, it takes in the new temp and it sets the temperature of whatever it's called on. This one just gets called, returns its temperature, right? So the same way we create our new thermostat, it has a temperature of 76. We say temp equals thermos dot temperature, which would return this one, this dot temperature, so 76. And then they say thermos dot temperature equals 26. So they're trying to assign it. So dot temperature takes in the 26, assigns it to be 26. If we try and run this now, we'll see that we pass some of the tests but fail others. If we actually read through this in full, we would see that the reason is because we want to convert the temperature to Celsius. So we want to return, we always want to return the value in Celsius, but we want to store the value in Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's what this all actually says if you read it, is that you're basically going to set the temperature. So this new temp is going to be in Celsius. Well, we're going to make it, well, no, it is this new temp value is Celsius and we're going to convert it to Fahrenheit. And then this, this dot temperature is Fahrenheit. And when we return it with the get method, the getter, we're going to return it in Celsius, if that makes sense, right? So that's why they give you these conversions here to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And once again, I would definitely read all this carefully to actually get the full idea of what you're trying to do. But if you, once you do read, you'll see that, that it gets instantiated with a Fahrenheit value. And when we update it, we, sh we want to store the value in Fahrenheit, but always display the value in Celsius. Okay. So if we're trying to return the value in Celsius, the value is currently in Fahrenheit. So we need to get to Celsius. So that's this equation. So let's plug that equation in here. So we're going to return and it's this one right here, Celsius equals. So we need to do five divided by nine times the Fahrenheit temperature, which is this underscore temperature, right? That's the actual temperature that we saved, which is in Fahrenheit. So we're going to take that minus 32. So you can see this equation to get Celsius from Fahrenheit is exactly what I'm returning here. If I run this again, we're getting closer now. You can see I'm only missing one check mark now. So calling the setter with a Celsius value should set the temperature. So when we're calling this set method right here on line 24, thermos.temperature equals 26. This is 26 in Fahrenheit. I need to save it in Celsius. So I'm going to say, okay, take on set temperature on the setter method, right? Where we're actually updating this temperature value. We're going to take the new temperature and we're going to say this dot temperature equals the new temperature. Oh no, wait, we need this new temperature to be in Fahrenheit or I'm sorry to be in. Yeah, to be in Fahrenheit. So it's, it's 26 in Celsius. We need it to be 26 in Fahrenheit, not in Celsius. So to get from to Fahrenheit from Celsius, it's this equation. So this dot temperature equals that equation. So it equals oh, the new temp, which is Celsius times 9.0, apparently divided by five plus 32 divided by five plus 32. Now, if we run that, you can see I do get the check mark because once again, when we're actually creating the thermostat, we're setting the value in Fahrenheit. So this dot temperature is Fahrenheit. When we have our get method actually return us the temperature, it returns us the temperature in Celsius because we're doing the math on that this dot temperature. So we did the conversion. Then when we actually go to set a new temperature, the new temperature we get to set is in Celsius. So we need to convert it back to Fahrenheit with this equation, which sets this dot temperature to the new temperature with the equation that actually makes it the new temperature in Fahrenheit, right? Because this new temp is Celsius. This converts it to Fahrenheit. So I hope that made sense. As you can see, this does get the check marks. This really is just like a kind of a, a popular theme in coding that you'll see in other stacks besides MERN. If you, you know, when you choose to learn some other stacks like C sharp Java or something, getters and setters are a, a common theme in programming with objects, but 
uh, yeah, not as important to understand in terms of like daily use. I, I think everything kind of is going functional now, so it's not as much class based anymore, but it is still an important thing to understand the concept of, okay, private properties you don't want direct access to, you can make a function that gets the data and then you can make a function that sets the data. In this case, we did exactly that. We just you know, got the data and manipulated it before we returned it and then set the data with new data that we manipulated to get the Fahrenheit value. So hope that helped. Hope that made sense. See you guys in the next video.